Hello, my name is Maziar Motahari, and today I'm going to present an introduction to the new Econometrics Toolbox. Here is an agenda as to what I will cover in this webinar. First, I'll briefly talk about how MATLAB and other MathWorks products fit the workflow of financial modeling. Next, I'll talk about some of the features of Econometrics Toolbox. Then I'll do a demonstration of those features and we'll end with Q&A. To start with, I'd like to show you where our products fit the typical workflow of financial modeling and analysis. First of all, there is the process of accessing the data. The data might be stored in files or in databases, or it may come from data feeds. You can use different tools to bring data into MATLAB, including database toolbox and data feed toolbox. The middle section is the explore and discovery section, where we do the data analysis and modeling and design and develop our algorithms and try to analyze them to see how good the results are and then build a larger application from those algorithms. For this section one can use MATLAB and the math toolboxes like statistics toolbox and optimization toolbox. Then there is financial toolbox and domain specific toolboxes like financial derivatives toolbox, fixed income toolbox and econometrics toolbox. And over here on the right side, there is the issue of how to share the results with colleagues or clients through reporting and documentation or deploying applications to third parties. In this section, we have Report Generator, which allows you to create presentation style reports. And we have MATLAB Compiler, which allows you to deploy your work as a standalone application or use the builder products to turn them into Java components or .NET components. In this webinar, I will only focus on the middle area, and in particular, I will only talk about some of the features of Econometrics Toolbox. Before starting with the main topic though, I would like to show you one slide on application deployment. Let's say you have built your application in MATLAB using any toolboxes required and you want to share the application with the end user. You run your code through MATLAB compiler to create an executable file. And then you can give the file to any user to run your application. The end user needs to have MATLAB component runtime installed on their machine, which is available to them free of charge. You could also use our builder products to create Java or .NET components. Okay, now we'll move to our main topic of discussion. Econometrics Toolbox combined with MATLAB, Optimization Toolbox, and Statistics Toolbox, provides an integrated computing environment for modeling and analyzing economic and social systems. It enables the user to perform rigorous modeling, simulation, calibration, identification, and forecasting with a variety of standard econometrics tools. Specific functionality in the toolbox includes univariate RMAX, GARCH composite models with several GARCH variants such as eGARCH and GJR, multivariate VARX model estimation, simulation and forecasting, and multivariate VARMAX model simulation and forecasting, Monte Carlo simulation of stochastic differential equations, diagnostic tools such as AIC and BIC, Hodrick-Prescott filter, unit root tests, and statistical tests. 
I will now briefly get into the theory behind the demonstration I'm going to present. You can treat a financial time series as a sequence of random observations. This random sequence or stochastic process may show a degree of correlation from one observation to the next. You can use this correlation structure to predict future values of the process based on the past history of observations. Using the correlation structure allows you to decompose the time series into two components. A deterministic component, the forecast, and a random component, or the uncertainty associated with the forecast. The equation on the slide represents a univariate model of an observed time series y sub t. In this model, f is a nonlinear function representing the forecast of the current return as a function of the information known at time t minus 1. The information includes the past innovations, the past observations, and any other relevant explanatory time series data. A common assumption is that the innovations are zero mean random disturbances that are uncorrelated from one period to the next. They are not independent though. In fact, the conditional standard deviation, sigma sub t, incorporates the serial dependence of the innovations. Here z sub t is a standardized normal or student's t iid random draw. Depending on the functional form of f, we can have different models. The first equation on this slide is the general Rmax model for the conditional mean. Epsilons are the innovations, the phi are the autoregressive coefficients, and the theta are the moving average coefficients. The functional form of the conditional variance of innovations determines which Gartz variation is being used for the model. In the next slide, we will see the Gartz variance available in the toolbox. These variants include the general Gartz model, the GJR model, and the eGartz model. Econometrics Toolbox also has tools for comparing alternative models and helping us choose an appropriate model for our problem. A list of these tools includes autocorrelation, cross-correlation and partial autocorrelation functions, Akaike and Bayesian information criteria, likelihood ratio test, Jungbach's Pierce Q test, Engel's Arch test, and Dickey Fuller and Phillips Perron unit root tests. A different aspect of the toolbox is the Monte Carlo simulation of stochastic differential equations. Many common SDEs are predefined in the toolbox, including arithmetic and geometric Brownian motion, constant elasticity of variance, Cox Ingersoll Ross, Hall White Wasicek, and Heston stochastic volatility. The most general way of creating an SDE model is to define the corresponding drift and diffusion functions denoted by f and g in MATLAB. f and g can be any linear or nonlinear functions of x and time. Using this method, we can virtually define any SDE of our choice. If one wants to use one of the predefined models, one would call the constructor for that model with the required input parameters, which are not functions of x anymore. For example, for the linear drift model, now illustrated on the slide, one would call the model constructor with parameter a, b, alpha, and v. Or in the case of a Brownian motion, one would only need to define parameters mu and v and you can see the equations for the rest of the models mentioned on the slide.
With this introduction, I will start a MATLAB session to show you the product. In this demo, I'm not going to teach you how to use MATLAB or show you all the different capabilities of MATLAB IDE. I will only use the features that I need for the purpose of this demonstration. Okay, here's my MATLAB desktop and in the workspace here you can uh, see the time series that I have previously imported into MATLAB. This data could have come from an Excel file, a text file, or directly from a financial data service provider like Reuters or Bloomberg. The variable NASDAQ contains daily closing values of the NASDAQ composite index. The sample period is from January 2nd, 1990 to December 31st, 2001 for a total of 3,028 daily index observations. Let's first take a look at the plot of the data. So here, I have used the function bizdays which is a function in financial toolbox to generate a vector of business days from January 1990 to December 2001 and then I use the function price to return to convert the price series to return series and then I use subplot and plot to plot both series in the same figure so here you can see the index values and the return values. In the next cell in my code, I will use uh, functions autocore and parkour to compute and display the sample autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation of the returns and the upper and lower standard deviation confidence bounds. From these figures, there seems to be a little indication that we need to use any correlation structure in the conditional mean. Now I'm going to do the same for squared returns. This figure shows that although the returns themselves are largely uncorrelated, the variance process exhibits some correlation. Now let's quantify this correlation. There are different ways to do this. We have the Jung-Box-Pierce Q-Test and Engels-Arch Test in the toolbox. Here I'll use um, Engels-Arch Test. The null hypothesis is that a time series is a random sequence of Gaussian disturbances, that is, there is no arch effects. And um, as input arguments to the function, we have specified a 5% significance level, and it tests up to 10, 15, and uh, 20 lags for the autocorrelation function. By looking at the results, we observe that this test also shows significant evidence in support of heteroscedasticity. The way to look at the results is that the three rows correspond to 10, 15, and 20 lags respectively. The first column is telling us the null hypothesis is rejected, and second to fourth columns give us the p-value, test statistics and the critical value respectively. We notice that the test statistics are much higher than the critical values. And we get one here for rejection of null hypothesis. So now I'll start the modeling. I'll go ahead and uh, define a GJR model and estimate its parameters by fitting it to the data. Instead of running this part from my MATLAB script here, let's go and do this interactively from command window directly. So let me clear the screen and uh, 
as I said we want to define a GJR model let's call the model spec and um, <coughs> well I do not know which function in econometrics toolbox to use for this purpose so something I can do is to go to function browser here I go to function browser and I see a list of all different toolboxes I have installed on my computer well MATLAB these are the MATLAB functions divided by subcategory the kind of job I want to do why now I want to use econometrics toolbox so I come here and I see okay if I wanted to do GARCH modeling I could use GARCH fit to do the estimation or GARCH pred to do the forecasting or GARCH sim to do the simulation these are the uh, univariate GARCH functions if I wanted to do um, multivariate analysis I could go to multiple time series section and I would find a list of all the functions that could be used in that area well here I know I want to specify a model so I go to model specification and I see that you can use the function GARCH set to create or modify a GARCH specification structure so um, well that's what I want and I can see more information on how to use it here so I'll just double click on GARCH set and I'm set so uh, let's see what will happen if I just call this function uh, without any input arguments okay um, a model is created called spec and I can see that it's the default model so the def default model is a rmax00 or doesn't have an x so it's rma00 basically it's saying that the returns is equal to a constant plus innovations and variance is a guard to one one function by default let's say I did not want to do so I want to as I said I want to define a GJR model so well, I don't know how to do that um, I just when I open the parenthesis the function hints here give me some help as how to do that it says that the input arguments are in uh, in a series of pairs of parameters and values so parameter 1 value 1 parameter 2 value 2 or if you already have a model and you want to change that model uh, the first parameter can be the old specification and then you can add the new parameters and values in this case we wanna start from scratch but I don't know what the values of these parameters and values can be so I can just go here directly instead of opening a new documents page and I see well all uh, the, the definition of the function the description and all the different parameters I can use so if I'm interested in uh, changing the conditional distribution of innovations I can use the parameter distribution and as a value I can use students T T or Gaussian and uh, I can define the order of my conditional mean model by defining R and M and I can define the variance model that I want to have so that's what I was looking for variance model um, we want to use GJR here and we can also define the orders of the GJR model by defining the parameters P and Q okay so I'll go back here and uh, I'll use that information I say I want the variance model to be GJR orders 1 comma 1 and uh, the mean model be an ARMA model again with orders 1 and 1 so if I execute this make this a little larger I see that the new model is as we wanted a GJR 1 1 ARMA 1 1 now um, let's say I do not want the default distribution of Gaussian so I have defined the model spec I can just go ahead and, uh, <coughs> and modify it 
here. So as a first argument, I can use the old specification that I had and I can define the new parameters I want the student's t distribution. So if I do that, I get the same model now with a student's t distribution. Okay, so now that the model spec is defined, we are ready to use it to do estimation and forecasting. Let's go back to our script up here. So we define the model. Now, as we saw earlier in a function browser here, the function to do the estimation was called garch fit so I'll use that with input parameters of spec the model that we just defined and the data to estimate the parameters of the model if the display parameter is not set to off the diagnostic information of the optimization process will be displayed in the command window here and um, <coughs> now that the parameters are estimated I can go ahead and use garch disp function to display the values of the parameters together with their standard errors okay now that our model parameters are estimated let's go ahead and do some forecasting and simulation I'll compute forecast for the NASDAQ return series 30 days into the future so I'll set the horizon to 30 and then I'll call our um, forecasting engine Garch Pred with um, the estimated model parameters and the return data and the time horizon that I just set okay doing so I will return the results here in these variables and they are 30 by 1 double vectors so each row corresponds to one time step now that I have the forecasts I'll go ahead and uh, do simulations I will simulate 1000 realizations or sample paths for the same 30 day period using the same model by calling the garch sim function okay now I will have the simulation results now these variables are 30 by 1000 so each row again corresponds to one time step and each column represents one realization for the simulation and here at the end I'll compare the simulation results to forecast so I will um, calculate the averages for the different simulations simulation realizations and compare them to the result of uh, the forecasting function Garch Pret okay I will dock these figures into MATLAB figures window um, well I would like to see all of them together so here they are here you can see the red dots are the simulation results 30 dots for 30 time periods compared to the forecast results let's say you decide that this is a let me take this out of this window first and let's say uh, while well you see dispersion between the simulation results and the forecast obviously and you decide this is too much simulation because um, 1000 realizations was too small of a number and you want to increase that number so you go back to MATLAB and uh, you just go back to this cell and since the 1000 I want to do 30,000 so you can multiply this number by 30 and just rerun this cell and rerun this cell to have the new results okay 
here are the new results we dock them again in the figure we go to the figures window now you can compare and see that um, well the dispersion is much lower obviously due to the increased number of sample paths okay this brings us to the end of this demonstration before going to Q&A I would like to show you where you can find some recorded webinars on other topics that you might be interested in you can find a list of our webinars at www.mathworks.com slash company slash events slash webinars or you can just click on the webinars link from our homepage www dot mathworks dot com please post your questions regarding this webinar in the Q&A panel which is indicated by a question mark at the bottom of your screen we are now going to have a few minutes of silence as I collect your questions <laughs>